I've always been put off learning 3D drawing and printing because it's difficult, isn't it? <laughs> well, it looked pretty difficult, a bit too complicated for a simple man like me. But just watch this, okay? This is an online program called Tinkercad and it's completely free. So you can just go there, as I did, and pick a shape, any shape, from the selection on the screen and drag it onto the workspace and away you go. Using the right button on the mouse, you can look at it from different directions. And if you use the left button, you can change its dimensions. Now, just a little bit of practice and it's easy, I promise. Right then, so far so good. But now this is the fun bit. If you take another shape, which you can also manipulate first. Then you can do two different things. You can either combine them together and make a much more complicated shape. Or you can cut one shape out with the other one and again make a much more complicated shape. And that's it. Those two options mean you can keep adding and taking away until you have the thing the way you want it. And you don't need to know maths or physics or clever design technology or anything. It is amazing. Now, of course, many of you will know all this stuff already. And I feel a bit silly talking about it, but um, I'm, it, it's all new to me, but it's really exciting. And so I had to share it. You do have to use this program online. So it wasn't any good here until fairly recently when the internet connection improved. But I mean, what an incredible thing this is. So much simpler than all the other programs I've looked at. Yes, it is limited, I'm sure if you wanted to design a horse or something or sculpt a face maybe but if like me you're interested in gears and levers and mechanical thingamabobs then this is ideal and now i want to say a big thank you to joshua delisle who gave me a 3d printer thank you very much joshua Joshua lives in England and has an excellent YouTube channel. I first found him when I was looking at blacksmithing, but he does all sorts of other things too, including reviewing 3D printers and laser cutters and other things that companies give him to test. He must have a great big pile of them by now. Anyway, a while ago now, he offered one to me and I said, yes, please. And my brother, Mike, and my sister-in-law, Rosie, picked it up from England and brought it here to Ireland in the back of their car. And it sat here unused until this week. Now this week, with some help from Ashley, who knows about these things, it finally was switched on and activated. And this, <laughs> this is the first thing I printed and it's a bit of a mess, but that's not the printer's fault. I was being so mean with um, trying to spare the filament thing that I printed a miniature version of my design and it was just too thin. And also it was the wrong way around, but I learned from that and progressed quickly even. This is the second ever thing what I made and I was quite proud because it came out exactly the size and shape I wanted. Like magic. I won't bother you with the exact process but I promise it wasn't difficult, just new to me so it took longer than it would even today. 
Yes, Tim, it's called learning. Yes, that's how it goes. Anyway, that printed out beautifully. What a great printer. So I made another one, exactly the same, just by pushing the button again. <laughs> and glued them together with super glue. And look what happens when you dribble water on it. It seesaws up and down, making a tick-tocking noise. What fun! Again, I could have made this in some other way for sure, but it would be hard to get it as neat as this and as well balanced. So it seemed to be just a great way to try things out and see what needs changing. For instance, this works fine, but it's too small for my application. You see, I hope to make a mechanical rain gauge, something that sits out in the garden and measures the rain day and night. Because I, I do keep going on about the rain, I know that. Uh, and I'd like to be able to, you know, find out what is actually happening here, not just what it feels like. And yes, you can buy rain gauges already, of course, but not the way that I want to make one. So I'm going to have to make my own. And this double-ended tipping bucket is just a part of it, but it is an important part, the tick-tocking heart of it, in fact. And wouldn't it be fun to cast it in bronze or aluminium or something? But really, its true importance to me is that it shows me, gives me a glimpse of what is possible with these tools. Because that's what it is. This, this program, Tinkercad, and this 3D printer are both amazing and hats off to all the clever people who made them. But really, they are just tools, just like a saw and a hammer, except not quite the same. <laughs> And they're very useful for certain things and completely useless for other jobs like chopping wood or whatever. But if you want to develop something, as I do, and test out shapes and sizes and ratios and stuff, then they're almost unbelievable, aren't they? These things would be science fiction just a few years ago and now they're available to anyone. Science fact. What an age we live in. The rain gauge is going to take a while to develop and make, so don't hold your breath. But in the meantime, I'm using Tinkercad to draw other things, including a scale model of this engine. I did draw a different fuel tank and I simplified some of the shapes, but it's basically the right proportions and sizes and everything. And I think it could be very useful in developing the loco for the railway, if I use it. I can draw in the frame and where the wheels might go and the transmission and just make sure it's all going to fit before I start cutting up steel. So, as ever, a myriad of exciting avenues to explore every day. How lucky am I? One last thanks to Joshua. Do check out his channel link in the description and stand by for more developments in the workshop on the railway thing and in the rain gauge technology design development center <laughs> okay then <laughs>